is Five on 20 News with Joel Foster. And it's Casual Friday the 13th. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> casual Friday is the casual Friday? Okay, wait. <laughs> That's good. Because I'll tell you, it's hard to breathe under that thing. Here we go. Ah. Two, 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 son. Happy Friday the 13th. Casual Friday the 13th. Wow, wow, wow. So let's talk local headlines. Tucson has the unique distinction of being named the least appealing area for a new Amazon Global headquarters. Yay! Three weeks ago, Amazon announced that they were scouting locations for the headquarters but said that they hadn't decided yet. Tucson tried to woo Amazon by sending a saguaro cactus to the company's headquarters in Seattle. Amazon said that they couldn't accept the cactus and ended up donating it to the Desert Museum. Maybe because they had to pay shipping costs. Tucson fell dead last on the list, dead last. Birmingham, Alabama came out on top as the most attractive place for Amazon to relocate. Birmingham did the sensible thing and sent a, little, a nice little promotional video to Amazon showing the city decorated in the company's iconic boxes. Washington, D.C., Danbury, Connecticut, Frisco, Texas, and Charlotte rounded out the top five. But look on the bright side, Tucson. When the Amazon drone wars begin, we'll be in an old Pueblo far, far away. So also going on here, a bill co-sponsored by Arizona Congressman Paul Gozer received preliminary approval on, on a bill that would limit the president's ability to declare national monuments. The bill is in response to the Antiquities Act, the law that allows presidents the power to name monuments. Before the bill was presented, Gozer argued that the original act was intended to affect the smallest amount of land possible, but has been overused by past presidents. He then pointed out that President Obama used the Antiquities Act to protect over 500 millions of acres of land. Gozer's bill would require a public input to the process and settling a one-year limit on any emergency designation that is needed to head off imminent and irreparable harm. Why is Gozer so concerned about the national monuments? He says he simply wants to seek more public input into the process, so it could uh, be that. Or it could be that Gozer has received over a quarter of a million dollars from the gas and oil industry, according to Open Secrets, a website that tracks cam campaign contributions. Sounds like something fun to look at this weekend. The bill would also allow the president to reduce the size of previously designated monuments, which was recommended by Interior Secretary Ryan Zink. According to the leaked White House documents, Zink would like to shrink monuments such as Bears Ear in Utah and Oregon's Cascade Siskiyou, although officials have not officially released the report. I imagine he's got some sort of shrink ray plan for the funding. Democrats have unsuccessfully pushed for a resolution to make the Interior Department provide copies of every document related to the review, but it fell short by six votes. But Representative Raul Grijalva said that Democrats will not let our national monuments and sacred sites be turned over to oil and gas industry without a fight. The oil and gas industry responded by saying, you're on, and, sipping a crisp hundo in, oh, and slipping a crisp hundo into Gozer's slimy pocket. Yep, I'm not surprised there. That's how it all works, right? Scratch my back. Hang on. Who's going to scratch yours? A federal appeals court said that a penal sheriff's deputy must stand for trial uh, for the shooting of an unnamed man in Eloy. The decision by the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals reversed a lower court decision which had thrown out the case against Deputy Health Rankin on the grounds that... Uh, I'm sorry, Deputy Heath Rankin, on the grounds that he had immunity for shooting of Manuel Longoria. The appeals court said that there are too many material disputed facts in the case that is, needs to be put in front of a jury. Longoria has, uh, was killed in 2014 after a 70-minute police chase that involved officers and backup from the sheriff's department. During the chase, officers said that Longoria became erratic and began throwing money and other objects out the window. He also stopped several times to speak with the police, but resumed the chase each time. In one stop, he held up and kissed rosary beads, and in another, he told officers that he had no reason to live. At another stop, he held a wallet behind his back, which one officer noticed and reported this on the police channel. However, Rankin said that he didn't hear the dispatch. When officers finally did get Longoria to stop, he initially refused to show his hands, causing officers to fire several beanbag rounds and a taser. Video recordings that sh then show that Longoria was disoriented and he quickly threw his hands in the air following the attack. But at that point, Rankin, who was standing farther away and didn't hear officers call off the lethal force, shot Longoria twice in the back. Longoria's family and the estate sued for wrongful death and excessive use of force. Now the case will go to trial where a jury will decide whether Rankin used excessive force or just has selective hearing. 
Governor Doug Ducey will travel to the United Kingdom later this month to take part in a series of meetings addressing economic development in Arizona. Ducey will meet one-on-one -on -one with high-level international business leaders. According to a press release from Ducey's office, the United Kingdom is Arizona's second largest source of foreign investment behind Canada, and the UK invested over $1.4 billion in 2016. This included over $858 million in imports. Ducey says that the trip will position Arizona to compete globally for jobs and talent. The trip was organized by the Arizona Commerce Authority, who arranged for Ducey to also attend an Arizona Cardinals game at Twickenham Stadium. Ducey will spend the game explaining to the group how confused Englishmen that, no, no, there's no wicket, and it's not called a batsman. Ducey's office says that the governor is excited about the trip and has been walking around the state house saying, good day, mate, but no one has had the heart to tell him the truth. So now, <clears throat> hang on, let's loosen up for this part. Is Joel still, Joel still dead down there? I want to take this moment to talk about the program you're watching right now. Here at 5 on 20, we are undertaking a new kind of citizen journalism. We're going to give you the news as we see it, and we want more people to speak up with us. We need writers, hosts, anchors, camera people, sound people, the whole gamut. The times require a new way of informing ourselves. So join us. Do it. And do it now. Email us at info at creativetucson.org to get involved. And if you think there's a story we're missing, a person we should interview, an upcoming event we should cover, or have any news tips for us, shoot an email to info at creativetucson.org. We are here for you, and we want to cover all stories from all points of view. So don't be strangers. And now, an international news. The Trump administration decided last night to end subsidies to health insurance companies as a uh, part of the Affordable Care Act. The move was seen in the latest efforts to destroy the, to destroy the ACA, better known as Obamacare, after three failed attempts by Congress to repeal the law. Earlier this week, the administration said that they would allow cheaper alternative health plans that wouldn't require the same level of coverage as ACA-approved plans. The subsidies are paid to insurance companies who in turn provide cheaper coverage for low-income Americans. Stopping the subsidies will likely cause insurers to exit the insurance marketplace and put the health care at low risk. Another possibility is that insurers stay in the market but raise premiums because they will no longer be reimbursed by the government. In addition, the new alternative plans could further raise premiums because healthy people would likely go for these plans. That means that the health care plans for the sick will likely increase in price. The decision to end the subsidies will most directly affect middle class families who buy their own insurance without financial help from the government. Consumers who earn more than 400 percent of the federal poverty are who consumers who earn more than 400 percent of the federal poverty level, which is about 48,000 per year for an individual and 98,000 for a family of four, will likely see their costs rise. People with lower income will not be affected because the government provides direct subsidies to ensure that out-of-pocket costs remain stable. But when premiums rise, those tax credits rise along with them. <clears throat> which uh, means that it will end up costing taxpayers more money. The Congressional Budget Office found the ending the seven billion per year subsidy payments would actually cost the federal government almost 200 billion. So it ends up being more expensive to, the, to end these payments than to continue them due to increases in medical care. So to conclude, our president is costing us 193 billion dollars so he can embarrass Obama. You gotta give him credit for being so committed to being so terrible. The House passed a bill on Thursday to provide $36.5 billion for disaster relief after recent hurricanes and wildfires across the country and Puerto Rico. The package includes $18.7 billion for the FEMA disaster relief. Ah, stay down, Joel, stay down. Ah. Out of this, $576 million goes to wildfire recovery efforts, while $1.27 billion goes to Puerto Rican food assistance, which is basically an extension of the food stamp program. $16 billion of this funding goes to paying back national flood insurance program debt, which can be borrowed from the Treasury because the program hasn't been able to keep up with the destruction. Critics say that this funding only serves to encourage people to continue to build in storm-threatened areas, which will further increase costs in the future. Arizona Representative David Schweckhardt said that the bailing out of flood insurance program without reforms amounted to throwing good money after bad. The bill was approved with 353 to 69 <laughs> vote, with Republicans supplying all of the opposition. Fiscal conservatives such as North Carolina's Mark Walker says that disaster relief should be tied to spending cuts in the budgets. Walker said that it's only a matter of time before the U.S. faces the next catastrophe, but for some reason the government does not budget with, it, with this in mind. In response, Trump suggested cutting North Carolina's budget and calling it the Mark Walker is a very huge loser act. 
sure that's true, probably. The ACLU sued the Department of Homeland Security, accusing the agency of violating the Constitution when they forced all the passengers on a domestic flight to be held and searched by the Border Patrol. The suit wants the Border Patrol and the ICE to clarify their position on the unusual search because they described it as routine in press reports at the time of the incident. The suit claimed that Delta flight from San Francisco landed at New York's JFK airport on February 22nd. When the plane landed, passengers had their, had their identity documents seized and searched, a violation of the Fourth Amendment relating to illegal searches and seizures. The lead plaintiff in the case, Kelly Amandi, who was on the flight with her seven-year-old son, said that the search made her feel intimidated and confused as to why they would be asking for our IDs at the end of the flight. Border Patrol said that its agents asked to see ID as part of an ICE request because they had received a deportation order after multiple criminal convictions for domestic assault, driving while impaired, and violating a protective order. But the individual turned out not to be on the flight, according to an ICE statement. The agency said that, uh, said that they apologized and offered three future apologies that people can cash in for next month, when this will inevitably happen again. So Russia, hackers. Russian hackers reportedly used Pokemon Go to interfere with U.S. politics. Amazing. CNN reported that a Russian leaked campaign called Don't Shoot Us used the game to uh, pose as part of a Black Lives Matter movement. The campaign posted on its Tumblr page to urge users to find Pokemon in places where police brutality had occurred and then rename the Pokespots after the victims. The report states that the campaign was likely run by Moscow linked troll farm Internet Research Agency, IRA, or uh, or yeah, the IRA, who have been found to use Facebook and Twitter to deliver div divisive political messages in order to cause disorder among the US public. Niantic, the makers of Pokemon Go, said that the images were misappropriated without their permission and said that the contest wasn't played through the game. The Don't Shoot Us Facebook account was removed from the site, but their YouTube channel and website remain active. In response to the report, Squirtle accused CNN of engaging in, witch in a witch hunt that won't end until they catch them all. Squirtle, Squirtle. So this was 5 on 20 News with uh, this guy, Frank Powers. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to all our social media accounts for all the latest Creative Tucson news and content. Feel free to bother us at info at creativetucson.org. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay unlucky, Tucson. Happy Friday the 13th. Ooh.